morning, CCU, and welcome to another exciting episode of the pre praise Report. I'm coming live from our satellite studio. This morning, I'll be sitting down with my mother, Reverend Poole, and we'll be talking about ways to better your credit, or if your credit is already great, ways to maintain that credit. But CCU, let's get down and find out what's going on at your church. Don't forget, Every Wednesday at 7 p.m., Bishop will be teaching on the signs of the times. Also, the senior housing is still accepting new applicants. If you or someone you know is looking for your new home, sweet home, please contact the number below. Also, we are starting our phase three of our residential living. Let's take a look. The CCU Senior Housing offers brand new luxury resort living featuring a beautiful entranceway with a water feature, large common area, kitchen, gym, and game room. If you think the CCU Senior Housing is for you, contact the leasing office today. CCU is also currently building its third phase of residential living with 60 more units being added onto our current 90 unit section of housing the new phase is set to be completed as early as mid-2021. Keep an eye out for more information on leasing. Let's not forget that also on Wednesdays, the youth ministry will be having Bible study on Zoom. If you or someone you know wants to join into that youth Bible study Zoom call, please contact Reverend Poole or, Tyne, or Tanya Hayes. Thank you. Giving has never been so easy. If you want to give to this wonderful house of God, you can go onto our website, ChristCareUnitNBC.org, click on the donate button and donate there. Or if you want to use Cash App, you can cash up to the hashtag GiveCCU. Okay, CCU, at this time, I'd like to welcome our first ever returning guest, my mom, Reverend Poole. How you doing? Hey, how you doing, Bree? Good. Thank you for coming back and visiting us. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. Of course. So let's get down to it. We're talking about credit today. Can yes. you tell us why credit is so important? Well, credit is important for several reasons. One being that you can spend two to three times more than what a car is worth if you if you have what we call a high interest rate okay. versus a low interest rate. Credit is your access to home ownership. Um, more um, everyday spendable cash if you have good credit. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of is kind of one of those stepping stones to financial freedom. Okay, you mentioned credit. What is, what is I mean, interest, I'm sorry. You mentioned interest. What exactly yes. is interest? Okay, good question. So an interest rate is basically the percentage that the bank says, this is what you have to pay us for borrowing this funds. Okay. And most accounts have what we call interest on them. However, credit bureaus or uh, credit unions sometimes will have an interest rate of like 2.7, whereas a, a regular lender can have something up to like 7.1. 7 .1. Now, is that but if you have what we consider bad credit, which okay. means the bank can't trust you, then your interest rate will, or your APR, would be up around 13 percent wow that's that's pretty high yes. up to 23. okay now yeah. say i have bad credit and i'm trying to um raise it or make it better what are some ways that i can make my credit better good so how to improve your credit score is the number one thing is to plan ahead and track it monthly now, how do you track your credit score or report and your credit score? The best re resource to go to is those that are given by the United States government, the federal government, and that website is freecreditreport.com. Okay. So this is how you track your credit report throughout the year. Um, so you would go on to it annually. Um, at the beginning of the year, say January, you would log in and you will look at everything that's showing up on your credit report. And the way you can increase or improve your credit score is by um, disputing things that's on there. Now, what do I mean? There's some tricks of the trade that most people do, do not know about. One of those things is if you're like, say, for instance, you owe a medical bill, but you were not ever able to kind of make an agreement and start paying on it. Mm -hmm. So the medical, the, um, the hospital 
sells your bill off to another person, a contractor or someone, and they contract contact you and say, hey, listen, um, this is such and such and such credit um, agency, and we would like for you to pay off this bill, mm -hmm. and we're willing to put you on a payment plan. Well, you don't have a contract with that, uh, that third-party biller, and so you can dispute on your credit report and say, no contract. And if you say no contract in parentheses, the credit bureau will have to take that information off of your credit report and you don't have to pay for it because that company has written off that debt at the end of that year. I didn't know that. Wow. Yes. So that is a good thing to do. That's why you need to constantly be looking at it. So if it's ever sold off to someone that you don't know and you don't have an agreement with, you don't ever make an agreement with them, period. If you say something to them like, oh, well, I'm agreeing to do um, $5 a, a, a month. You just entered into an agreement with a third party biller and you that is a legal binding contract, which is why they use so many so much verbiage on the phone with you mm -hmm. like this call is being recorded. So you never, ever agree to do anything with them. Another thing about credit is that credit goes off of your report every seven years. So if you have a debt and it is it's due to go off at the beginning of 2021, do not enter into an agreement with the uh, with the creditor because it's going off of your credit report next in um, January of 2021. But if you if they say to you, hey, can we set up a payment plan? That's an agreement. That's a verbal contract. Yeah. You're then liable for the whole full funds of that amount. Wow. So yeah. what if I'm somebody out there like who's tuning in right now and they're saying, I don't have bad credit. My credit is pretty good. You know, they think their credit is pretty up there. What are some ways that they can maintain that good credit score? Okay, good. So we're, we, we just went from what we consider people to have bad credit to now we're looking at, okay, we understand what our interest rates are. We want to, our goal is to try to keep lower interest rate and to deal with lenders that have lower interest rate. Now we're talking about people who have the credit, but need to maintain it otherwise. The same rule applies, Bree. You want to plan ahead and track it monthly. You want to be constantly looking at it. Experian has a great um, website where I think they charge $30 a month where you, they will send you your credit report and any changes on it. But there's a lot of free resources, free credit um, that we mentioned before. Free credit report will allow you to go in anytime you do any inquiries. And let me explain. That's another word that I need everybody to understand that, that this is how your credit can be affected as well. Yeah. If you have an inquiry, that means I went to buy a car. Right. And the credit, um, the, the lender ran my credit report five times. Well, every time you have an inquiry, if you have it in a, a, a selected amount of time, that's OK. That can go down potentially as one inquiry. But if they do it over the matter of like two to three weeks or a matter of a couple of days, each of those inquiries will take five points off your credit report. Wow. And so your score can, you could have a good score and a good score is anything over 615, 620 up until 800. Now, but if you got that, inquiries, mm -hmm. it drops your score, you know, very quickly. Now, is that a hard inquiry or is that like a soft, is that something that. So that's what we consider to be a hard inquiry okay. because a soft would be somebody like your insurance um a insurance company through your credit union wanting to offer you insurance and so they want to do a soft pool the best mm -hmm. thing to do is to go onto your credit report go through everything and put on there where no one can pull your credit report without your permission mm -hmm. and that will stop soft pools mortgage companies do soft pools where they will pull it and just get the score without doing a full pool but all of those inquiries pull down your score. There's wow. another thing that affects your credit. It's called debt to um, credit to ratio, debt ratio. Mm -hmm. And what that means is if you have a credit card, say you have a credit card for those who have credit and their credit limit is $5,000. If they have anything over 10% of that credit card in usage, their debt to ratio is high. And that will pull down their monthly score. So for $5,000 of credit, you should not have any, on a normal month-to-month -month basis, you should not be spending more than $500 a month on that credit card. Because that tells the lenders and the banks and those who are giving money out, this person is a financially secure person. Mm -hmm. Okay? Wow, that's, that's really good information. 
It's really yeah. good information. So say, let's backtrack a little bit. So if I don't have good credit and I want to build it, what are some things yeah. that I can like, I don't know, is a credit card really a good idea to get if I don't have anything on my credit to help me build it? Okay. So let's be clear. Get? So you are a new person. So let's talk about the newbies to credit. So you're new to credit or you've had this seven years of grace period and it's wiped off all your debt and you now need to rebuild your debt. The, you can get what we call a secure credit card through someone like Capital One or someone like that, where you send them $300 and then they open up this credit card for you. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to build credit and you're either a newbie or you're trying to reestablish your credit, what you want to do is keep in mind that 10% state under that, if you have $300 on that credit card, you don't want to spend more than 30 a month. Right. So what I tell people, young people starting out who's trying to build credit, I say, go to the gas station on the day you get paid, fill up your gas tank, tank, go home and pay that off. Cause mm -hmm. that's what we call revolving credit. So each month it's showing that, Hey, this person has a, these, this person is financially sound. They're not spending to total max of $300 on their credit report. Mm -hmm. And so that bumps your score up. That's, that requires a lot of discipline and dedication. And it requires that you monitor it monthly by looking at your score. Now with um, Capital One, they will send you your credit report. You can log into your online account and you can see what your credit score is every month for free. So it, they have a lot of good resources. Okay. And I have sent the, I have sent out all of those information. They can look at the resource sheet and pull up that information on some good people that have secure credit cards. Yeah. Like I, myself, yeah. I use credit karma and it yeah. helps me track my credit score. Um, mm -hmm. I check it like at least twice a month just to see what's on there and see if anything has changed. Um, good. That's really good. But I know you like you've given me the advice of, you know, using it for my gas, my, you know, using my, my credit card for to pay for gas. And that has it's helped me a lot um, mm -hmm. for those who are trying to build a credit, I, like give an estimate amount of time on how long it takes for them to get out of like the low 500s to a good credit score. Like, does it take months? Does it take a year? How long does it usually take to get a really good credit score if you're doing so things? So, so that's a very good question. So someone in the low fives, right? 575, 530. You have a lot of stuff on your credit report. Now, let me just be clear. Revolving debt is what reports to the credit bureau. So electric bills, gas bills, that kind of stuff does not report. Okay. Mm -hmm. What reports on your credit report is things such as revolving debt, which is like credit cards, automobile, mortgages, right? Mm -hmm. And say if you get a judge judgment or a lien, that's like saying that you, or if you got an eviction notice, those are the things that show up on your credit report. Now, if that credit card said that payment is due on the 10th, that's not negotiable. Mm -hmm. You need to pay it on the 10th, but they don't report it late to the credit bureau unless it lapsed. So that means on the 10th of November, it was due and you did not pay it until the 11th of December. That's going to report as a 30 day late. And then from there, it would go to 60 to 90. So even though you might be late because of a situation, my best um, analogy to those type of people is that call, if you're struggling right now because of everything that's going on with COVID, call your, your lenders and tell them, hey, listen, I'm having some financial situations. Can I skip a payment? And the credit bureaus and your credit card companies will allow you to skip it. So that's another thing. The, the thing is to be proactive. And I know that it's very hard when you're dealing with a lot of debt and a lot of change going on that people can get really depressed and overwhelmed. Right. But the best thing to do is face debt straight on. Face your finances with, yeah, hey, pray about it and then call people and explain to them your situation and you can get things reduced. Mm -hmm. You can get your interest rate reduced for a year if you if you lost your job. You can skip payments. I know during the initial thing of COVID, they were allowing, auto um, lenders were allowing you to skip every other payment. And so that kind of stuff will help people or six months of payments. And there's a lot of different resources that you can look into if you have a mortgage or if you need help with rental assistance. And that information is posted as well. Now that kind of gave me the idea. I know you have, you gave me or someone I know advice about refinancing their car. Isn't it yes. possible that once you have, you like bring your credit score up that you can go refinance something? Yes. So if you, so 
the best people to finance with, I will tell anybody, is credit unions. Mm -hmm. They have the lowest interest rate. Even if you want to refine your mortgage, if you have a mortgage and you want to be able to reduce the interest rate, now is a great time to do it. And police and fire right now have no um, application fees, no um, no out-of-pocket fees to refinance with them. And that's a great resource to have because what it does, typically when you refi on a house or an auto, you got to pay a couple hundred dollars, but on a mortgage, you might pay a couple thousand. You can waive that if you're dealing with um, um, credit unions. With credit unions, you can build a personal relationship with a lender. You can call them and say, hey, listen, I'm trying to build credit. I want to be able to buy a car. I want to re refi my car. Mm -hmm. What should I do? And they will tell you specifically play by play what you what they need you to do. And so those relationships are vital. Whereas a big bank, you might have more accessibility, but it's really hard sometimes right. to be able to negotiate and find out who's going to approve your loan. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Poole, for all that important information. I hope that this has helped somebody, you know, with their credit score. Is there anything else before we go to praise and worship that you want to tell our viewers? Yeah. So the only thing I want to say about is when you when you think what, wherever you are in your journey of life, mm -hmm. plan ahead, track your income, track your finances and be able to feel open and honest about asking for help and resources. There is a lot of resources that I have put out there. Um, those of you who might be in need of food, there's a lot of we have the food bank. But right. also right now you can go online and apply and get, um, um, and they will call you on the phone and do your screening. Whereas before you might not have been eligible, they've right. lo lowered the poverty guideline. So increasing your income to get your debt under um, and, and check is a great option right now. Mm -hmm. Working from home is another option. Most jobs um, are, have some sort of telecommunication where you work from home. Mm -hmm. AAA right now is hiring a lot of people where you can work from home from 11 to 7 and answer the phone when someone calls through in the, in the evening and you can make some extra income that way. All of those things helps you to get your manage your debt and look at what your debt ratio is. Ratio okay. is. Well, thank okay. you so much, Reverend Poole, for coming. You're welcome. And visiting us. We hope You're that welcome. we can bring you back for another segment and maybe bring yes. you some more information from you. So again, thank you for coming here and being with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I love you, CCU family. All right. Thank you. All right, CCU. Thank you for joining us this morning on the Pre-Page Report. I'll see you guys here again next Sunday at 845 a.m. We're going to pass it over to the sanctuary to praise and worship. I'll see you guys all here next week. Bye, y'all. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we give God praise in this place this morning? My God, I serve a faithful God. Hallelujah. How many serve a faithful God this morning? Those at home, how many serve a faithful God this morning? Come on and put your hands together and give God praise in this place. For oh, he's so worthy, he's so worthy as he is. I call you holy, your name is holy, you are so holy to me. Say I call you, your name is holy, holy you are, and holy you'll be. Come on and put those hands together 
and give God praise in this place. Uh, yeah. Say, I call you holy. Say, yeah. I call you holy. I call you holy. You are so holy. I call you. Your name is holy. Holy you are. And holy you'll be. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Say 
holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. Help me say, I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We greet you in the majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is still the Christ, who woke us up this morning and started us off on a brand new day. Amen. Sun is shining and a little bit nippy outside, but we're here. Amen. So we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Certainly thank God for our preachers that's with us today. Amen. All the preachers stand up that's here, Let's stand up wherever you are, amen. God bless you, God bless you. Our evangelists in the house, stand up and evangelist. all right, praise the Lord, amen, amen. Anyone on ministry, stand up. Deaconess, ministry, deacons, all right, praise the Lord, all right, amen. To our media, thank you, to our musicians, God bless y'all. To our singers, bless them, amen. And so we are fit for service, amen. Come to lift up the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. <clears throat> Before we get into the message, we want to uh, just thank you for your condolences for my mother-in-law who passed on Thursday, well, I think it was Thursday, getting my days mixed up. But um, we praise God for your prayers, amen. Uh, she went home to be with the Lord, and that was her desire. Ever since my wife passed, she'd been saying that she wanted to go and be with her. So God honored her request, and it looks like Saturday is going to be the date that we're going to have the service here at the church on Saturday. I talked to my sister-in-law, and uh, we're planning for Saturday. Amen. Well, the time will be forthcoming. But please keep in mind those that are bereaved, the Stokes family. Sister Stokes lost her brother and father on the same day. And then Brother Stokes had just lost his brother. Then, of course, the Bush family, and the Jones family, played for the Rose family. You know, and so those that you know that are bereaved and those that you know that are sick, pray for them. Amen. Um, we are during a time that uh, unprecedented where you see things that we've never seen before. And um, so pray. Prayer will change things. Amen. Amen. Alrighty, let's continue on our journey. We were talking about assurance before I had my little break, and a lot of the preachers came and preached on it. Um, but we want to look at Romans, the fourth chapter, and look at verses 1 through 5. Romans 4, verses 1 through 5. And it reads, What shall we say then, that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward, and not reckon of grace, but of the debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Amen. Look at somebody and say, just as if I never sinned. Amen. Say, tell somebody else, just as, as if I've never sinned. Amen. Amen. Today we are talking about justification. As you notice in the text, he says that uh, those that believe it, Talking about those that don't believe in works, but believe on him that justifies. That God is the one that justifies. Who does he justify? The ungodly. And the writer was kind enough to give us an example of it by looking at Abraham. If you go back and look in Genesis 15, 6, it says that Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as a righteousness. Amen. Because he had belief in God. Now, the word Believe is synonymous to, synonymous to the word faith. Believe in faith. Amen. 
It's words that can be crossed, uh, changed together when one believes, that means they have faith. Faith is the, now faith is the substance of things, hope for and evidence of things yet not seen. Amen? So uh, we have to believe on something that we have not seen. Amen? Uh, most of us have not seen God, but we know that he exists. Amen? And therefore we have faith in him. We did not walk with Jesus. We did not talk to him because he was here way before we were. Amen? Amen. But we know that he's real. Why? Because we have faith in him, our belief in him. And so it's letting us know. And what Paul is doing in this letter he writes to the Romans is really letting them know the difference between law and grace. Amen. The law you had to work to fulfill it. Commandments given in the Old Testament. They had to work in order to fulfill all of those laws. Now, under grace, it's letting you know that it's God bestowing upon us that which we really don't deserve. Amen? But God, in his infinite wisdom and love for humanity, saw a way to pardon us, to justify us. And uh, we were the ungodly. Amen? Those that, uh, and the word, they use the word ungodly because it encompasses all of your wrongdoings. People without a God. If you don't have a God, you're not serving God, then everything you're doing is wrong. Amen? If you don't have the true God, you, you don't have God to forgive you for your sins, then all of your sins just stack up. And you can just go to transgressions, transpasses, lawlessness, and all of these things. It just begin to stack up against you. You had a pile. Every time you're saying it, it would just be adding up, adding up, and adding up. And it would not go away because Romans 6, 23 said the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so what God did with all the stack of sins that we had stacked up against us, God and his sovereignty, that is the power that he has, that he can declare what he wants to declare. And that is he decree what he wanted to decree about sinners. And it was that he would allow his son to come and put everything on him and declare and decree that we have been justified as long as we believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. As long as we believe that Jesus Christ came, died for your sins, and put your faith and trust in him, God said, all these sins you have committed, I'll just take them away. And then he says, when you look at the Greek, the Greek explains a little bit better. He says that not only does he justify us, amen, but then he has declared us to be righteous, amen, having a right relationship with God. God has decreed it and has declared it that this is how it is. Now, you've got to remember that ju the word uh, justification is a judicial term. And it points to a legal system. And in a legal system, like you're seeing now, the president is going out with his last few days pardoning people. There's a pardon for um, Flynn. He pardoned him. And he said he's going to pardon many more folks who are guilty of crimes. Guilty of crimes. But once they're pardoned, it's like they never did it. They're not a felon. Once they're pardoned, they can go back. They can vote and do whatever else. It's just wiped. The slate is just wiped clean because they got a presidential pardon. Governors can do the same thing. Amen? And so, uh, uh, so God, since he is the one that determined what he wanted from us, amen, because he's the ones that are setting the rules and the laws. We couldn't go to God and say, well, this is what I want to do, you know. It's like if you owe somebody a million dollars, you go to them and say, well, I'm going to give you ten, and the debt should be settled. And they say, I don't think so. I go call your mortgage company up and say, well, you know, I think my mortgage is paid now, and so I'm not going to send any more money. And they say, oh, but, but it's not. It's not paid. You know, yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, no, no. See, but God said, yes, it is. Yeah, and you don't have to pay another payment. God said, I said it, and it's done. You don't have to pay nothing else. And, uh, you know, thank God. For the power of God. Now, it's, uh, it's interesting because justification really comes into play when you think about what happens when we leave this world. Amen? Uh, those that are not saved have not been justified. 
then of course they're going to die. And uh, the book of Revelation, 20th chapter and 12th verse, talks about those that stood before the Lord and um, whose name was not written in the Lamb Book of Life were sentenced to eternal death. But those that have been justified, just as guilty of some things as the ones that went to hell. But remember, you're not going to hell for what you did. You're going to hell for what you did not believe. Amen? That's what you're going to hell for because you did not believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so, uh, uh, and, 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 and it's funny because once you accept him as your Savior, the Bible lets us know that we don't have to worry because God has already pardoned us. Amen. And it's the eternal pardon. That is, when you get in the judicial court of heaven and stand before the Lord, you'll find out when the verdict is read, if you could picture yourself standing before God, and then uh, uh, Satan being the, uh, uh, the attorney against the prosecutor, trying to prosecute us and coming up before the Lord, saying all kinds of things about you, and the things he said about you is true. Amen. And he said, this is why you shouldn't let them go to heaven, because they did this, they did that, and naming all these things. And he's arguing and arguing, and then all of a sudden Jesus Christ stands up and says, they are not guilty, because I paid their debt. I paid it in full. They have been justified, you see, by God. And then we are set free. And then God said, you're free to go on to glory. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You're free to go to glory, and uh, you're going to be in glory forever. And in glory, things you're not going to get sick while you're there. Amen. You, you won't need no doctors when you're in glory. Amen. All you have to do is just enjoy. Enjoy the Lord. And don't have to worry about getting sick and don't have to worry about your heart stopping and getting dying again and all. All that to be passed. Amen. Amen. And you look, and you're there because... Not what you did so much, you know, but it's what, who you believed in. And so you can imagine how we're going to be praising God. Because you look around and see how he has blessed you to get you there because of your faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's look at some scriptures. And, um, and number one is Romans uh, 5, 1. Tells us that we have been justified by faith. Amen. Therefore, he said, look, therefore, he says, being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, look, notice he used not only the name, but he uses the titles and the name. Number one, he says, of who? Our Lord. The word Lord means kiros and uh, connects him with the Jehovah of the Old Testament. Amen. And then he's not only, but he's Jesus. Jesus was his name. And if you read Matthew, it tells us that his should, name should be called Jesus because he'd be what? The savior of the world. Amen. And then he is the Christ. Christo, the anointed one, the Messiah they looked to come for. In the Old Testament, they waited for a coming Messiah, the one that the prophets talked about that was coming. He's already here now. Amen. He's here, and he's already paid our sin debt in full. Therefore, we have been justified by faith. We have peace with God. Now, you know he justified us because he went to Calvary and paid our sin debt in full. Your salvation is free to you, but it's not cheap. God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I tell you, nobody is better than God. Nobody loves you like the Lord loves you. I'm telling you, I don't care who they are. I don't care how much they tell you and how much they promise you. They love you. Don't nobody love you like God loves you. Amen. He loves you more than you can even imagine. And uh, so he sent his only begotten son that he would come and he would die for us. And therefore, we would have peace. Now, he put the word peace here because... Uh, if you go into 2 Corinthians 5, it tells us that we were at enmity against God. And uh, the word enmity means we were enemies of God. And, 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 and there's no peace between you and your enemy. 
Amen. But not only did Jesus Christ come and, and die for you, but he also did what we call propitiation. That is, he brought about peace between you and God. God is no longer angry at you. Amen. Because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. That's why when you call on him, he answers. And that's why we find out there's power in his name. Because along with having peace with God, he gives you the authority and the ability to use his name. Hallelujah, somebody. His name, when you get in trouble, you can use his name. You know, when I was growing up, my father used to say, you know, uh, if anybody say anything to you, tell them you're my child. Amen. You belong to me. And his name had some weight because people knew him. And I was just a kid. Amen. But uh, God is saying that, look, you, once you are, are saved, you're born again, you, you can use my name. Now, some people might not realize how important it is that you can use the name that has power. Because there's power in his name. Amen. And uh, I don't know if you ever use it or not, but you know that if you know him, you can use his name. Now, a reference is in the book of Acts, the 19th chapter, where it talks about the sons of Sceva. Sons of Sceva was watching Paul do miracles, casting out demons and, and all. So they decided that they wanted to do the same thing. Amen. But they, they went to try to cast out the demons, and they said they're going to try to do it in Paul's name, uh, you know. But, uh, it, uh, it, but it didn't work because they didn't know who Jesus was. Amen. And so what happened? They tried to cast out the demons. The demons wouldn't get out. The demons jumped out and then jumped on them. And they said it beat them till the clothes came on. They, they beat them till they got naked. Now, that's, that's a whipping. My mother used to beat me, but I never got it. I mean, the beating didn't last so long until I, I was, my clothes was beaten off of me. Amen? But, but, but in that case, in Acts 19, they tell you that the clothes was beaten off of them because of what they did and not having the authority and the power, you know, that Jesus Christ has given us. He does not only give us uh, the authority to use his name, but he gives us what we call exousia. I can't even say the word, the Greek word, which means authority. Amen. To use his name. So, therefore, you, you, you don't just have power, but you have the authority to use his name. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that if you get in trouble where you need him, you can just call on the name. Because there's power in his name. Ain't that good news? That you don't have to worry about like, a, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? All you just say, Jesus. The frustrating moments in your life where you don't know what to do. Jesus. And there's power in his name. Now, I, I can't explain it how as soon as you say, Jesus, whatever's in front of you start to move. I, I, can't under, I can't explain it. Whatever's around you trying to harm you, you say, Jesus, it moves. I, I can't explain it. How so When you speak that it immediately happens, I can't explain it. But I know that it's real. I know that it's happening. There's power in his name. And, and you and I ought to rejoice because there's power in his name. And God has given you that power to use whenever you are in trouble. Whenever things are coming up against you, you're in a predicament that you don't know what to do. You have been justified by the power of God. Therefore, you have peace with God and you're allowed to use Jesus' name. Hallelujah, somebody. Thank you, Lord. And when you call on him, how many of you know that he will answer? Anybody ever tried him and call on his name and, and got a response when you call on his name? Hallelujah. Uh, we used to do what we call call and response. Preaching is call and response. I say something, you respond. Amen. Well, well when we call on Jesus, he responds. Come on and talk to him as somebody. Ah, I'm telling you, that's why David was able to sit down and write the 27 Psalms. In the first verse, he said, wait a minute. The Lord is my light, my light. In other words, he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. So therefore, the Lord is my light. And not only is he my light, come on, but he is my salvation. Ah, uh, come on, talk to me, somebody. And the word salvation encompasses that whatever comes up against you, 
that he delivers from all alarms, not just one thing. And then he goes ahead to explain the things he's talking about in the next verses. The Lord is my light, my salvation. The next thing he says, wait a minute, whom <laughs> shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Because the Lord is what? My light and my salvation. Why? Because I have been justified. I'm not guilty. Oh, come on and talk to me, somebody. And I have power to use his name. He, he's my light. He's my salvation. He says, whom shall I fear? And then he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, the Lord is the strength. <laughs> the Lord is the strength of my life. Oh, come on, talk to me. Whom shall I fear? Oh, come on. He is the strength of my life. When, when my enemies, anybody ever had any enemies? And my foes come up against me. He said, look, they stumbled and they fell. Why? Why would they stumble and fall? Because of who I am. I have been justified by the blood that he shed it on Calvary. Um, your name is already written in the Lamb Book of Life. Uh, come on and act like you're supposed to act. Act like you're God's child. Act like you ain't got nothing to worry about. Act like that he's with you. Act like that he walks with you. Act like he talks with you. Act like he will take care of you. Give him some praise in the house today for who he is and where he brought you from. See, 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 see this word justification, it, it, it runs on. Not in, uh, about all of this covers because you have been justified and it leads to righteousness. It, it runs over, the cup running over to righteousness. Listen, not only have I been justified by his blood, but, but also it's accounted unto me as being righteous. God declares that you are righteous. Come on and talk to me, somebody. God declares that you are his child. And you can't be his child unless you have been sanctified. And sanctified means that he declared that you are holy. <laughs> he said, be you holy because I'm holy. And he, and he knows how we strive for, but God said, I'm going to declare that you are holy because I'm holy. Come on, because you never reach it by yourself. Isaiah 64, 6 tells us that all of our righteousness is like 50 rags. Amen. All of our righteousness that we could do on our own is like 50 rags. But thank God that God sat high and looked low. And God looked at us and declared that we are righteous. Not only have been justified, but justification leads to for righteousness. Meaning I got a right relationship with him. Come on and talk to me, somebody. And the relationship that I have with him cannot be broken. I'm his child. This is where assurance come in. I am his child. And the relationship I have with God, can nobody separate me from God. Can I just look at Romans 8 for just a minute? Who can separate me from the love of God that I have in Christ Jesus? Can I paraphrase it a little bit? You know, can, can, can heights, can angels, can principalities... Hallelujah, somebody. No, no, no. He said, no, no, no. And Paul gives a whole list. If I had, wish I had time, you can look at it later. He gives a whole list of things that cannot separate him from God. He said, wait a minute, can height? No. Can death? No. Can angels? No. Can principalities? No. And then he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, 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 I can nothing separate me. From the love I have in Christ Jesus. Not even death can separate me from the love of God that I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen, you ought to tell your neighbor that you are somebody this morning. Come on. Just, just tell them. They might not want to hear it. Tell you are somebody. You have been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are somebody. 
Amen. And, and because you are somebody, you ought to start acting like you are God's child and acting like you have been acquitted and acting like that there's peace between you and God and acting like when God gives you peace, it's peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give, but my peace I give unto you. Hallelujah. That's why you can go through hell and high water and still be content. Oh, come on. Come on. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You, you've had some stuff. The devil has went back and got some stuff and threw some stuff at you that ought to stop you. But because of who you are. You, you like the time max. You, you took a licking and, and you kept on ticking. Can I get a witness in here? We just keep, we just keep marching on. Amen. That, that battery, what was that battery they had out there? What was it? The energizer. Yeah, the energizer battery. When, when, when things, was, all other little batteries had stopped and they couldn't go no farther. But the energizer, the energizer, it was able to just keep on moving on. Amen. Yes, sir. Just keep marching on, praise the Lord, because it had been, amen, had some other power that the other batteries didn't have. There was something put in the energizer, amen, that caused it under stress to keep on, keep on moving. And the other little batteries died out, and they stopped. But here come the energizer. Yes, sir. Ain't that just what we do? When everything else is falling down around us, when everything else looks like it ain't going to happen, we keep on. The devil keep on throwing stuff at us. But we keep on moving. Can I get a witness in the house today? Somebody ought to give the Lord some praise. Just because you got some stuff in you that the world don't have. God has put something in you called the Holy Ghost that allow you in the hard times to hold your head up high. Hey! And just keep on going. Your enemies will look at you and say, wait a minute, he's going to fall soon. They ain't going to make it out of this. I heard they lost the job. I heard they're going to lose this for you. Hallelujah, somebody. Give the Lord a praise because he's given us He's given us some stuff that caused you to make it anyhow. Now, let me pass this. I'm about ready to get out of your way. Uh, and some of them say, well, Reverend, you really didn't preach. Uh, yeah, well, I, I did what I could do. Amen. Um, uh, and and so, so what I want you to, to, to understand this morning is that whenever you see trouble coming, don't get afraid. Some of us think the, the possibilities of things. You know, you have some possibilities. You can look and see, oh, suppose oh, that happens. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Oh, the devil is putting thoughts in your head. He's putting thoughts in your mind because he wants you to start doubting. Look at somebody say doubt. He wants you to start doubting God before the problem even comes. You, you just It's like a boat out on the water. You look, can't tell what it is, but so far away, it looks like a boat, like it's coming. And many of us do it with our problems before it even comes. We start calculating. Oh, God, that's the enemy. Put that thought in your head, boom. You know, you're having a good day, and all of a sudden, here comes the thought, boom. Suppose. You lose your job. Oh, God. What would I do? And you start entertaining that thought. Stop that. Amen. And if he comes and says, suppose you lose your job, the Lord will take care of me. <laughs> I don't have no doubt that the Lord will take care of me. Hallelujah. Well, well you, you might get sick. Well, the Lord will take care of me. I'm not even going to entertain that negativity. I'm going to think positive because I serve a God of possibilities. Amen. 
for the Bible says that all things are possible to them that believe, to them that have faith in God. God has said, don't limit what I can do. All things are possible to him that believe it. And it means all things. Some people say, no, he meant some things. No, he didn't say some things. He said all things. All things are possible to, to him that believeth, that he that have faith in God and will stand up and believe God even when it don't look like it's possible. That's where your faith come in. And instead of letting doubt get you, get a praise. Start thinking about what he already did. Come on, look back in your rearview mirror and say, wait a minute. He's talking about what? That? My goodness. God has got a broader future for me than that stuff I done been through. Can I get a witness in here? So therefore, turn the doubt into praise. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. You ain't got to think about what's going to happen in the future because God's going to take care of you. Amen. He's promised that he'd never leave us nor forsake us because he's God all by himself. And let me give you two more scriptures and I'll get out of your way. One is found in Romans 5, 16. Kind of backs this up and explains why all this stuff is going on. All right? Notice what it says. He said, and not as if it was by one that sinned, so as the gifts for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift of many offenses unto justification. Now, what he's talking about in this verse is that what Adam did got us in a mess. Because Adam messed up and all of us came up messed up, Right? But look at uh, Romans 5.18. It explains it even further. It says, therefore, is by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Look at this. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift come upon all men unto what? Justification of life. So, Adam messed up, but Jesus fixed it. Hallelujah, somebody. Adam messed up, but Jesus, he fixed it. And because Jesus has fixed it, you can say, I'm not guilty. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. I don't care what the devil come and say about you, I'm not guilty. No, I'm not guilty. Why? Because Jesus had already fixed it. He fixed it for my past, he fixed it for my present, and he fixed it for my future. And guess what, devil? My future looks awful bright. Hallelujah, somebody. Whenever negativity comes, what you ought to do is start talking about how bright your future is. Start thinking about what God has brought you from. What he's done in the past, he'll do for in the future. Can I get a witness in the house today? And because you are not guilty, you have been justified by your faith in Jesus Christ, then act like it. I know Michael Flynn, when he got out of jail, I know he held his head up high and strutted because he had been pardoned. And any other person that's in jail, I was a governor, I think it was the governor of California years ago. There was a lot of people on death row. He found out that one of them was uh, innocent. And he said that he would be, you know, he, he didn't want to uh, carry that guilt that the man was innocent and, you know, and they executed him. So what he did was he changed the law. Everybody on death row was put alive in prison. Stop killing people because of what had happened. So the governor pardoned one because he found out they showed the DNA and the man wasn't guilty. So he let him go. And then he said, because of that, there no, might be others in there that are guilty, you know, innocent. I'm not going to kill any of them. Not on my watch. And he let them all go. And so what God has said, God said, wait a minute, wait a minute. All those that would believe in me, I'm going to let go. I'm going to let them go. 
I don't care what they did. I don't care what kind of background they have. I don't care what they come out of. I don't care what they have done. I don't care what they are doing. If they call on my name, I will save them. That's how far grace goes. That's how far mercy goes. He will save you. Doesn't matter what you have done. Ain't that good news? And that sounds like it's too good to be true. And that's why some people cannot accept it. Because it sounds too good to be true. But it is true. And I'm going to believe God. I'm going to believe the Bible. And I'm going to rejoice because it is true. Because God is just that good. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. I don't care if he's a convicted convict. I don't care if he's a murderer. I don't care what he's done. Paul was a murderer. And Jesus saved him. Come on and talk to me, somebody. Look at God. His grace and his mercy will reach down to the lowest valley. Reach down and pick you up. And not only will he save you, but he cleans you up and make you a new person. Uh, Come on, talk to me, somebody. Oh, thank you, Lord. It gets better. It gets better. It gets better when you think about Jesus Christ and what he has done for you. And guess what? You are locked in. You are saved. You've been locked in with Jesus. And that's where assurance comes in. That God did it. I didn't do it. If I would have did it, I could undo it. But since God did it because of my faith in him, I cannot undo what God has done because he has all powers in his hands. And so therefore I'm safe and secure in his arms. Hallelujah. Let the storm winds blow. Let the hurricanes come. And the tornadoes may rise in your life. But you can stand flat foot and say I'm saved. And I'm secure in Jesus Christ, my Lord. No matter what happens, I'm still secure. Thank you, Lord. Because I belong to him. Thank you, Lord, for what Jesus has done. Guilty, but I'm not guilty. Just as if I never sinned. All the offenses I've done has been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. All this I might do in the future has been washed away. For if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you. The word cleanse means that he bathes you in holiness. And brings you out. And there we stand. Guilty but not guilty. Guilty? No, you're not guilty. Guilty? But God said he's not guilty. Because of what? All of your stuff was laid on Jesus. Jesus bore it on Calvary. And he paid your sin debt. In full. Now, some people might even think, well, no, that's, that ain't happening. That's too good. That's not good. That, I mean, that can't be. I got to do something to help God out. Uh, you ought to remember what they tried to do when they were trying to move the ark, and they came to help God out by moving the ark, and God struck them dead. Amen. So God does not need any help. He has done it. He wants you to rejoice in him and be glad in him because of what he's already done for you. So when you get up in the morning, you can say, this is another day that the Lord has made. And I'm going to rejoice. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to anticipate what might happen. But I'm going to rejoice. And I'm going to be glad in who in him. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Don't get up come on, I'm having a bad day. And things ain't going my way. I'm having a bad day. No! Get up and thank God for the day that you have. Thank God for the blessing that he's showed upon you. Thank God that this is another day. That the Lord has made that I can rejoice and be glad in it. Say yeah! Say yeah! Say yeah! Oh, He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
You can rejoice because you're not guilty. You've been acquitted. My God. Rejoice. Because your names have been written. Rejoice. Because I'm his child. Rejoice. Rejoice forevermore. Somebody ought to be rejoicing right now. Somebody ought to be thanking God right now. Somebody ought to be giving them some glory right now. Rejoice. Forevermore, the remedy for bad days are good days. And the remedy for bad days is to get up saying this is another day that the Lord has made. And I declare I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad in it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We are grateful for your word today. Bringing us out of the pit and placing us on the mountaintop. Oh God, we pray that you touch hearts of those that heard the word today. That they may have a change of attitude. A change of view and perspective on life. When they see themselves as they really are in Christ Jesus. We love you. We bless your name. We thank you for all of the benefits you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you're look, looking at this on YouTube or Facebook and you don't know Jesus Christ, you're missing out on the finer things of life. The final things is not silver and gold, and what we think, and money and prestige. The final things is having peace with God. Amen. And understanding who you are in him and what he has done for you. That's where the joy comes from. That surpasses all understanding because of the peace we have with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you don't know him, you can get to know him today. If you're here at the church and don't know the Lord, you can come down. If you're at home watching your TV, no matter what room you're in, or look at it on your cell phone. If you don't know who Jesus Christ is, or did not understand before now what he is and what he is to you, you can, you can pray this prayer and invite him into your life. Jesus, come into my life and save me. Save me and write my name down in the Lamb Book of Life. And he will do it because remember, he justifies the ungodly. Amen. He doesn't wait for you to get righteous to just try to get righteous on your own. He justifies you just as you are. If you prayed that prayer this morning, we ask that you will call us. Media will give you directions on what you need to do to get in touch with us. We love you all. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Leave out with a different attitude and knowing who you are. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. We're going to ask our officers to come at this time as we prepare for giving. We ask you at home, don't forget. Continue to give your tithes because what the church is depending on it. God is depending on you. Send your tithes. And we thank you for the tithes that you've sent and your offerings that you've sent in. 
uh, ask that you might continue to do so because that keeps the lights on, keeps the staff here, and keep us to function as a church during this pandemic. Amen. So all these baskets they're holding mean the same thing. They're nothing. They're all the same, uh, the baskets. They're, they're not, uh, we're not divine like we used to be before the pandemic. All of them is for your tithes and offerings. All right? So as you come, and uh, you can use the machine if you don't have your cash today. Use your card, and even your American Express card you can use here. So, I'm going to ask that you start from the rear of the church and come and you bring your tithe and your offerings. Let us stand, all things come of thee, O Lord. God bless you. Remain standing as we give our benediction. And now may the grace of God and the love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit may it rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth and forevermore. Let this church of God sing. God bless you all. God bless you all. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful week. Mm -hmm. Going to ask you to uh, dismiss in our usual manner.
Sister Dow, we need to see you up front, all right? 